students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here in, on West, in West Coast Canada. This is the capital city of uh, the province of British Columbia. Beautiful province. Uh, welcome Zarina. Welcome students uh, to the class. Uh, we are looking at IELTS listening. Uh, the listening section, the first section of the sit down part of uh, IELTS. Uh, we're looking for that perfect band 9 score and band 9 is challenging. It means you can only get one question wrong or you have to get a perfect score to get that band 9. Uh, the topics, um, as you will soon learn for listening part 1 and 2 that we're looking at today, is school uh, registration and um, university uh, campus tour. Uh, you're going to uh, listen and discover on these uh, quite soon here. Welcome Augustine, welcome Rashika. Hi Carolina, um, good to have you moderating the class. Uh, students, this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com. Uh, for academic IELTS, uh, make sure to visit us there. Uh, for the general IELTS, it's gieltshelp.com. Make sure to visit us at gieltshelp.com. Um, in fact, the listening that we're going to hear today is coming from our uh, website, and we will use the website for the listening. Our IELTS materials are pretty much identical to the official IELTS. Um, we work together with IELTS and uh, with British Council on some projects. So uh, you're in great hands with us. Um, again, you can see that we're a British Council test registration, test registration center. Um, and uh, to access our premium IELTS package, click this uh, join button that's just above my head there. It's a one-time payment, lifetime access. That's a fractional amount compared to the IELTS, so it doesn't cost anywhere close to as much as the IELTS exam. Um, so to avoid sitting the IELTS exam two, three times uh, to get the right scores, to get your best score, learn from good materials. Um, use our full course. Uh, click on that join now. Fill out uh, this form. You can use the discount code um, ISIM9. This is coming from uh, one of our uh, latest releases on the YouTube channel. ISIM9. Of course, you can see all of our videos uh, in our premium package with no commercials, advertising, and just a much more effective way. ISIM9, 20% uh, discount, um, and uh, that will save you some money. Um, General IELTS, gieltshelp.com, same idea. Click that big red button. If you're not sure, you can read all of our success stories. We've got lots of them. We've helped so many uh, students around the world over the years. Um, again, we'll use the academic IELTS uh, today for our listening uh, section. Okay, um, you can also get our apps, academic IELTS help, general IELTS help from your app store. You can link the app to the website. You can follow us on Instagram, IELTS underscore AE help for academic, GIELTS help for general. And uh, if you have a question, if you're not sure, if you want to ask me um, some questions about IELTS, English, or products, uh, then uh, send me an email to uh, adrian at aehelp.com. Uh, Ramnath, you're in the right place. We are doing a listening class, so this will definitely help you in your listening. Okay. Uh, Ramnath, if you keep failing general IELTS, I'm not sure if you have bought study materials for IELTS, but maybe it's a good time before you spend a whole bunch more money on your next test to actually spend a little bit of money on um, IELTS uh, training. And you can do that on the website. Okay, You can uh, buy IELTS speaking interviews. You can submit and pay for IELTS editing for your writing. So maybe it's the right time to uh, use some structured materials. Okay, All right. So, uh, we have a special class today after this one, everybody. So at 9.30, uh, we will have a class on IELTS Discord. Um, IELTS Prep, sorry, I should say. IELTS Prep uh, server on Discord. 
Uh, Discord is a um, piece of software and uh, we'll have a special class today coming up. So if you want to uh, participate in a special uh, speaking class for the IELTS, uh, get Discord on your device, on your phone or your PC, and then look for the IELTS prep um, server and you'll see me there a little bit later in two hours, okay? I'm doing a speaking class. Uh, tomorrow we will do speaking here, okay? So we'll have two live classes for speaking, first one for members, second one for everyone. Uh, that will be speaking parts two and three, okay? So that's coming up. So we've got lots of classes on our YouTube channel. Definitely subscribe. Um, if you like it, you can become a member of the channel. There are some different uh, tiers there as well. Okay, Lost Sheep says, I'm waiting for the event on Discord to start. Great, that's cool. Yeah, Lost Sheep, I'm excited about that as well. It's gonna be some speaking. Okay, um, and then um, strategies uh, for listening right away, okay? So I'm going to give you a big strategy right off the bat. I keep repeating this one. This is a huge strategy. It can definitely get you an extra band score, so huge strategy. Um, you can save a whole band uh, by doing this on the speaking section or speaking sorry listening listening uh, section okay um, and the tip is look at the topics of uh, listening parts parts uh, two three and four while you listen to the instructions you're allowed to do this anybody that tells you differently you're not telling you the truth if the IELTS examiner or proctor says hey don't look at parts two it's not true you can they tell you that you can um, if you search online so the uh, computer-based um, IELTS exam, you can actually click through all the questions at any time, okay? Um, so if you couldn't look at it, they wouldn't let you be able to click through the different sections, and you can, you can click through. So uh, Carolina has just put the, uh, the Discord uh, link up for that event as well. Uh, thanks for doing that, Carolina. I'm going to actually add that here so that uh, people can join us, okay? So this is the... Um, this is the, the link uh, for that. You're gonna have to obviously uh, type that, but uh, that's it right there. Let's make it even bigger, boom, like that, okay? So um, that link will get you into that Discord uh, event for the next uh, class, okay? Thank you, Carolina, for doing that. I appreciate that. Um, okay. So a uh, huge strategy again, listen to uh, the topics of parts two, three, and four while you hear the instructions. Um, instructions are about 90 seconds. So, and then get ready and listen and answer part one, okay? All right, now if you miss some questions, don't panic, follow with the, um, the listening. So never freak out, never stress, be very calm during the listening. Um, oftentimes logic can help you answer questions. So just because you missed an answer doesn't mean you'll get that wrong. Uh, later you might figure it out, you might realize what the answer is. So don't panic, don't freak out, okay? All right, everyone, so um, we're going to do this listening. Uh, the listening uh, that we're doing today, it's test two, which is in fact our third test. Um, and uh, it's, um, uh, it's uh, coming from our first uh, book, okay? So uh, this is uh, CD3 track one on the website. I'm going to play that um, in just a moment. Okay. So let's put on our headsets. If you got a headset, use it. Um, you do have a headset for IELTS. You should. Um, most 
of the exam centers around the world now, maybe all of them are using headsets. Okay, back in the day, they used to just have like a stereo playing the audio, but that wasn't all that great. So now um, they really do try to use good technology in these uh, exam centers. Of course, India has all IDP now, um, but whether you're in a British council or in an IDP test center, they should be using headsets, okay? They should be using headsets. They're not, it's old school but I guess that still happens. So um, here are the questions. You see the questions in the paper-based exam. You'll see the questions as well. And then uh, your audio will kind of begin um, quite quickly after you sit down within a couple minutes. They'll give you some instructions. Uh, so here, this is aehelp.com. I'm logging into my student account. In my student account here, I've got a computer-based practice exams, um, and um, I can continue from where I left off. Uh, reading passages. Um, I've got uh, uh, a full online course. Um, I've got uh, exam books that I can download. Uh, lesson plans. I've got a ton of lesson videos um, that I can watch. Okay. But the reason that we're here right now is for this tab here, the IELTS audio CDs. So I am going to um, play the audio, listen, uh, take a look at the topics of parts two, three, and four while we hear the instructions, then I'll come back to part one. Don't put your answers in the chat, okay? Put it on another piece of paper or somewhere else so that you don't confuse people, especially if you start putting wrong answers into the chat, it becomes really confusing. Um, so we'll go through the answers and strategies afterwards together, okay? All right, so here we go everyone. Get ready uh, to listen and, uh, and answer. And again, at the beginning, during the instructions, you'll see me scroll and move through uh, the reading, or sorry, the listening passage um, to look at the topics of parts two, three, and four. Here we go. This recording is copyrighted by Two Think One Solutions Inc. and World ESL Tutors. You will hear several different recordings and you will answer questions on what you hear. There will be time given to read the instructions and questions and you will be given a chance to check your work. The recordings will be played only once. The test is made up of four sections. At the end of the test, you will have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. Now turn to section one. Listening section one. You will hear a conversation between two men as one of the men registers for a football league. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. You will see that there is an example. This time only, the conversation relating to this question will be played. Hello there. I'd like to register for the Autumn Men's Football League. All right. Uh, in what town will you be playing? I'd like to play in Chester, but I'd be willing to travel to Liverpool if I had to. The man says he wants to play in Chester, so B has been indicated for you. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to five. Hello there. I'd like to register for the Autumn Men's Football League. All right. Uh, in what town will you be playing? I'd like to play in Chester, but I'd be willing to travel to Liverpool if I had to. Well, we have two spots left open on the team in Chester yeah, I see that. It's and five spots going. open on the team in Liverpool. Okay. There's a very so, good chance you would have to try out for the team in Chester. Yeah, um, sorry guys, that was the wrong recording, but that's okay, it doesn't matter. I'm going to uh, play the right recording now. Um, the key thing here was actually the strategy that I was talking about, which was looking at the topics of parts two, three. Yeah, I looked at CD one, um, track one, but this is actually CD three, track one. So I'm going to play CD three, track one. And uh, this is actually a great, great um, chance for you to practice exactly what I just showed you. So you get the timing right. I wasn't actually paying attention to the instructions or the example in this case anyway. OK, 
okay? So I wasn't really listening to this audio. I was actually looking at the information in the question booklet. So it's a perfect example of what you need to do. If any of you were paying attention to the audio, it probably means that you weren't actually paying enough attention to the questions. So in that first 90 seconds, that should just kind of be automatic. You should be paying attention to the questions because the instructions don't matter. You should, you should be familiar with those way before you sit your IELTS exam, okay? So this recording is, is copyrighted by Two um, Think again, One Solutions Inc. So and World ESL Tutors. I'm not listening to these instructions. You will hear several different recordings and you will answer questions on what so you I can hear. See that it's a nursery school there will be time given to read the instructions for, and questions uh, and you will be given a chance okay. to check your work. And then I go to question the recordings 10, will be played only and once. When I get to question 10, the test is made 11, up of four sections. Um, I can see At the that end of the test you will have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. Opened. Now okay. turn to Something section one. about a university, and I can see seven Listening section one. Prescott building. You will so hear a conversation between two women buildings. as one of the women registers okay. her daughter for nursery and school. And then I keep kind of scrolling through, and I go first. To you have some time to look to at questions one to five. Get an idea of section uh, three or part three topic. So I look at if an Egyptian income was ten thousand, how much would be given to the pharaoh? Okay, what does that mean? So I can see that. There's a reason mentioned for taxes, and then the second reason for taxes. So I'm realizing that, okay, this is something to do with taxes. And then I look at You will at see that there is an example. Number 31. This time and only, 31 is the a conversation flow chart. relating to this Usually question the top of the played. flow chart shows me the topic of part four. So we've got Isaac Good afternoon, Monterey Primary. Jane speaking. Yeah, Hello, born. my name is Diane Johnson. I, I was hoping to register down. my daughter for nursery school at Monterey Primary. Of course, Miss Johnson. Galileo, Would you like to register Newton, your daughter for full day nursery uh, school Descartes, or half day Einstein. or full day we've plus after school again, care? So oh, just the half day. I don't think Matilda could handle a full day away from home just yet. I'm purposefully playing the audio. The woman says she would like to register her daughter for half day nursery school. So A has been indicated for you. Now okay. we begin. You should answer the questions as you listen because you will not hear the recording a second voice. time. Listen carefully now and answer questions back. one to five. And now you answer the questions. Good afternoon, Monterey Primary, Jane speaking. Hello, my name is Diane Johnson. I was hoping to register my daughter for nursery school at Monterey Primary. Of course, Miss Johnson. Would you like to register your daughter for full day nursery school or half day or full day plus after school care? Oh, just the half day. I don't think Matilda could handle a full day away from home just yet. So your daughter's name is Matilda Johnson? Yes, let me spell it for you. The first name is Matilda, M-A-T-I-L-D-A, -A, and the last name is Johnson, but it's not the common spelling. It's spelt J-O-N-S-S-O-N. My husband is Swedish, which explains the different spelling. Right. And what is Matilda's date of birth? She was born December 25th, 2006. So she was born at Christmas. That is incredible. Yes, she was an incredible present to get for Christmas. It certainly was the most memorable Christmas I've had. Yes, I would imagine. OK, so now I need Matilda's personal education number, which she should have received in the post recently. I don't remember receiving such a letter in the post. It would have come from the Department of Education, and they always post things in yellow envelopes. You don't remember seeing a yellow envelope in the post? In fact, I do, but I didn't open it. My husband did. He didn't mention anything about a personal education number. Now he's away with work, and I won't be able to reach him. Well, we can retrieve the number. I'm going to need your national insurance number, as well as your husband's. I'm going to need your husband's name as well. My husband's name is Eric, with a K instead of a C on the end. His last name is Johnson, of course. His national insurance number is DF987745W and mine is KL409115N. You now have some time to look at questions 6 to 10.
Now listen to the rest of the interview and answer questions 6 to 10. Right, OK, let me see here. All right, here is a personal education number. I will give it to you now so that you can write it down for future reference. It is T5634019. Just to make sure, the first character is T, as in Thomas. Yes, and this letter in front of the number shows what region the child is originally from. The T in this case refers to Tyne and Weir. That would be correct, I'd imagine. Matilda was born in Newcastle, which of course is in Tyne and Weir. OK, so we have all the information about Matilda that we need. She is now registered for half-day nursery school in September. Do you have any questions? Yes, I do. I was wondering what sort of training your nursery school teachers have. That is a very good question. Each of our teachers has, at a minimum, a two-year diploma in early childhood education. Many of our senior staff have bachelor's degrees in education in addition to the two-year diploma. And our departmental head, Miss Janet Roth, has a postgraduate certificate, bachelor's degree and diploma. Do not worry, Miss Johnson, your daughter Matilda is in very good hands. That makes me feel a lot better. Can you tell me when the first day of school is? And also, will there be an orientation day for new students and parents? The first day of class is the 5th of September, and yes, we do have an orientation day. It takes place on the 3rd of September from 9 to midday. Parents and children are strongly encouraged to attend. That is the end of section one. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. All right, students, and always check your answers in that half minute. Now, um, we had a couple of fantastic things happen um, while I was doing this. Uh, and I'll let you know what those were because um, that's very important. We're going to answer these questions in just a moment, okay? So, uh, firstly, um, yeah, I was talking while the instructions were happening. That wasn't an accident. That was purposeful. So I know that there were two pieces of audio that were going on and the camera was glitching just like it is now, which is great, okay? So glitchy camera and me talking, that was great. Why do you think I say that? Why do, I, why do you think I say that it's great that the camera was glitching? I can fix that in a moment if I need to. But it's actually really good. I'm happy that that happened. Okay, so I'm happy uh, that the camera uh, is, was glitching. Um, <clears throat> why? Why do you think I say that? So you're probably thinking Adrian's crazy. He's lost his mind. Um, but I'm actually happy about that. So I'm happy about the fact that the, that the camera is glitching, okay? And I'll, I'll try to fix that in just a, a second, but uh, why do you think? So why, do I like to look weird? Or do I like that the lesson's being interrupted? So why would I, why would I say that? Okay, so there, I just fixed it for us. Um, yeah, Dorsey says, because we need to concentrate, okay? Yeah you need to um, pay attention to uh, your goal okay same thing Bora. so notice how many of you are fixated on the camera okay um, but you shouldn't be in the IELTS exam this is one of the most common problems that happens uh, for candidates one of the most common problems that occurs uh, for uh, IELTS candidates during uh, the and also it's true for the reading as well but we're focusing on the listening during the listening section are distractions uh, the examiner giving instructions um, the candidate um, in the next uh, cubicle uh, tapping his pencil, um, the pretty girl who just sat down beside me, uh, the uh, strange uh, blue um, spot on my instruction paper, the uh, burned out uh, pixel 
on my computer monitor. Okay, and the list goes on and on. Um, so distractions are all around us, always. It's virtually impossible uh, to um, escape these um, distractions, okay? But you can't be distracted, okay? The IELTS listening, <clears throat> it's um, you're answering the questions while you listen. So distractions are dangerous, okay? Distractions in the mind, distractions in your environment, they're dangerous. Um, you have to train yourself to focus on the audio and the audio only, okay? So you must train yourself to focus on the audio only and block out any other irrelevant information. So glitchy camera, doesn't matter, okay? strange font doesn't matter right you're there to listen understand and answer the question that's your goal all right um, if there's a problem with your equipment you should notify um, one of the proctors immediately okay Okay, but if you say something like, oh, I heard a buzz for a second, they're not going to pay attention to that. It actually has to be a problem, like my, my headphones aren't working or something, okay? Um, or if you say, hey, excuse me, this person's tapping their pen, they're not going to rewind the audio, okay? So be really careful, all right? Distractions are your enemy, okay? You cannot let that get in your way. All right, um, so uh, we looked at, uh, during the instruction time, uh, the audio was going. You should be comfortable with the audio going. The only time that you're not paying attention to the audio is during that first 90 seconds of instructions, okay? So, so the only time you're not 1,000% paying <clears throat> attention to the audio is, um, during the instructions, and it's roughly about 90 seconds, practice this at home so you're comfortable with this, okay? Um, when you are, in fact, uh, looking at the topics of all four parts. I'm repeating that because it's important. So part one, uh, we know that it is uh, nursery school registration. Okay, part two, uh, we saw that it was something about a university. So, um, talking about a university. What was part three? Can anybody help me out there? So what was part three? The reason you're paying attention to the topics in the first 90 seconds is to help get your brain into the right gear, to help get it into the correct um, idea. Okay. Augustine says part three was about taxes. Um, Anish, they absolutely let you look at the topics of, um, of part two, three, and four. We talked to IELTS about this and they said, yes, definitely it's okay. In the computer-based exam, it's actually really easy because you can click at the bottom of your screen and you can jump to part three, part four. Okay, so uh, part three was about taxes. You're right, everyone. So taxes. Uh, definitions and different types. Okay, so uh, what was part four? Anybody, what was part four about? So there were a couple of names there, especially one name that kept repeating. Mm -hmm. That's right, Simran. So it was Isaac Newton and some famous scientists. Isaac Newton. Um, and uh, and some other famous scientists. Okay, definitely. All right. Yeah, and you are allowed to do this. Um, in fact, 
in the computer-based exam, you can use the navigation at the bottom of the screen to click to the uh, start of each section or each part uh, with one click. Okay, so you can actually just click, click, part two, click, click, part three, click, click, part four. So it's super fast, okay? So you can be really efficient. That's one of the benefits of the computer base. You don't even have to flip the pages, okay? All right, um, okay, so you've got the right idea. Let's uh, look at the answers here. Okay, um, I was showing you the pacing by highlighting the questions as we were coming across the answers. You won't have that help in the real exam, of course. And another important point is you do not have the example anymore since 2020, okay? So since 2020, IELTS does not give you a, an example at the start of the listening section. So there's a lot of materials out there that are before uh, 2020 and they all have this uh, example but no more, no longer. Um, it's not included anymore so keep that in mind, okay? You're not going to have that little extra buffer, okay? Alright, uh, just deep, we just did uh, reading. We just did a reading class. Um, it's up on the channel. Carolina is repeating me as well. Okay, so here, uh, number one, uh, what is the woman's husband's nationality? Uh, we really clearly hear this um, when the woman is talking about uh, her husband's name. Uh, they actually repeat the answer. So if you miss the answer, don't panic. Often they repeat answers in part one. So don't panic if you miss the uh, answer in part one. Uh, often it is repeated. A second and even third time. Okay. Uh, so Tony Lifestyle says the, the man is Swedish. Uh, so the correct answer is B. You're right, Tony. The man is Swedish. And the correct answer is B. Yeah, very good. Not Swiss, not Swazi. He's Swedish. Um, how is the uh, child's uh, personal education number received? They actually, they repeat this, uh, I think, like four times even. Uh, so it's uh, like repetition, repetition again and again. It's very clear. Is it by post, by email, picked up from the school? Yeah, governments are often old school, um, although it's changing now, but uh, they were old school for a long time and I uh, maybe still happens sometimes. So it was A, it was by post. Yeah, they mail it. Okay. All right, uh, question um, number three. Uh, why is the husband out of town? Now, they don't actually say the husband is out of town. The woman says, my husband is away for work, right? And uh, this away with work gives you the answer. Um, so uh, here, the correct answer is B. And I see that Nithu and Malra, just deep ream. Munira, me, uh, yeah, you're all right. It's it's work. It is. So he's out of town, not for family reasons, not for vacation, but for work. Yeah, very good. Okay. All right. Um, now here we had to choose uh, three uh, pieces. So be really careful when it says this three pieces. It's like a multi-multiple uh, choice type of um, question. And there's basically two really useful uh, strategies for this, okay? Uh, number one is take notes, 
okay? And number two is use logic, okay, to answer these questions, all right? So if you were taking notes, um, you should have um, written down national insurance, national insurance, Writing with a mouse is not easy, but anyway, there we go, national insurance. Uh, names, okay. Uh, those should have been uh, your notes, okay. All right, um, and then um, you should have realized something. So you should have uh, looked at um, these and you should have realized that this one, uh, the woman's personal insurance number, it's no. Uh, same thing here because it's a personal insurance number. So it's no, okay? Uh, why would you give a school your personal insurance number? Your personal insurance number is uh, your insurance, like life insurance, for example. You, you wouldn't do that, okay? However, uh, you should realize that uh, this one matches your notes, the woman's national insurance number. And the husband's uh, national insurance number matches your notes, okay? Now, woman's name looks good and the husband's name looks good, okay? We already know the woman's name. It's Matilda Johnson, so we don't need that. And so we know it's the husband's name, okay? So by using our notes and by using logic, we are able to figure out that the correct answer is C, D, and F, okay? So in your answer sheet, you basically write down uh, C, D, and F in any order, okay? Again, if you missed it, don't panic because logic and um, taking notes will help you, okay? So for these multi-multiple choice answer, take notes and use logic, all right? Is that clear? So uh, Nithu, I see that you have CDF. Jiang, I see that you have CDF. Simran, I see that you got that too. Good work, okay, nicely done. All right, so um, everybody clear on uh, the strategy here that I just presented? So use your logic and take notes uh, for this type of question. Thumbs up, everyone. Maybe double thumbs up. Okay, so as soon as you see this, as soon as you see this um, uh, information required to re retrieve a the child's personal education number, you got to get ready to take the notes, okay? Joe says yes. The reason why is because it's really hard to read all of this information while you're listening, okay? This is a kind of distraction. So especially if this question's in part two, three, and four, it's even more difficult because usually there's even more information. So it's a distraction. So you can't be reading all of these options. Uh, it's really tough to do that while you're listening. It's almost impossible. Even if you're a native speaker, it's almost impossible. So that's not the right strategy. The right strategy is take notes and use logic, okay? I can see lots of thumbs up now by Flora, just deep, Rajwinder. It's great, okay? All right, um, so Next, uh, next question here. How is the uh, husband's name spelt? Okay, so here we can pay attention to the differences. C K C or just K? Okay, it's the ending. C K C or K? And the woman gives a little bit of an explanation here. She says, "Oh, it's this way because my husband is Swedish." The correct answer, very good Rashika, very good Tony. Um, it's uh, very good need to uh, Sucharita, it's C. Okay. Um, so the woman actually here says, my husband's name 
is spelled with a K instead of a C. Okay. So she gives this information, and this is what you had to catch. This was the important part here, the K instead of a C, okay? So, which is kind of weird because the choice is C. <laughs> All right. Okay, um, <clears throat> what is Matilda's personal education number? So, uh, by using the man's name, by using the... Um, national insurance number that uh, the woman provides. We get these and we look for these differences again. So we see that the difference here is with the T and the P and the T and the P. <clears throat> so is it A, B or C? Just deep again and again is saying that it's A. Just deep is very, very confident that this is A. And it is, it is A, um, and there's even an explanation for why it's A. So A is the correct answer. And the reason for that, it only has the T, the T denotes the location. So listen to dictation, everyone. When uh, you're uh, doing your listening, make sure to practice this. Here, let me show you something cool, okay? Um, <clears throat> if you go to the website, if you're using our full course, our premium IELTS course, again, I highly recommend getting the premium IELTS course. At the very end of um, the um, the audio CDs, you see these uh, numbers like this. Numbers: zero, one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 19, 100,000, 1 million, 1 billion. Okay, so practice listening um, <clears throat> to the uh, numbers, okay? And uh, don't just practice listening to them, but even uh, repeat them. So practice your, if you're practicing the British accent, practice uh, here so you can repeat after the person. And then of course you've got months of the months year. Months of the year. January. February, March, April. Okay, so you've got months of the year, metric system, imperial system, days of the week, and lots more, okay? So uh, make sure that you practice, you use that extra material that's at the end of the audio CDs. Uh, we've got lots of material on the, on the website there, everyone, um, so make sure that you do that. Um, let me get back here, because we're gonna be using this for um, CD, or section two here in just a moment. Okay, so practice with that. Be very comfortable with dictation because um, it's not a question of if, it's definitely you will have this type of question where they're dictating numbers for you and letters, okay? So make sure that you use the course. The course is at aehelp.com, Reen, aehelp.com, okay? It's, um, <clears throat> All right, that's the course for the academic. For the general, it's this one here.
All right, number seven. Uh, where was the child born? Newcastle, London, Monterey. And again, um, the speaker says this very clearly because she says that the personal education number um, it also shows where the child is from, Tyne and Weir. Um, so that's why the T. And then she says that makes sense because um, she was born in Newcastle. That's right, A again. Yeah, it was very, very clear Newcastle, okay? All right, now here is another one of those multi, multiple choice kind of questions for number eight. You had to get both of these right uh, to get the correct answer. So here, um, the question was, what two qualifications do many of the nursery school senior staff have? So two qualifications, so you're looking for uh, two answers. Um, and notice here that it says many of the uh, nursery school staff have. So one-year diploma, two-year diploma, three-year master's degree, bachelor's degree, doctorate degree. And if you took some notes um, and you paid attention, you realize that the correct answer here, Anish says it was B and E. Yeah. Um, bonus question. Bonus time. Bonus question. You don't have bonus questions in the real exam, but I'm going to ask you a bonus question to see how well you're actually listening, okay? So what level of education does the uh, director have? Okay, so the director of the um, of this nursery school, um, what level does she have? Uh, Two-year diploma, master's degree, bachelor's degree, doctorate degree. What does is, what is, uh, she have? So they briefly mention her as well, and they say, hey, she's got this. Yeah, Augustine says she has a uh, postgraduate diploma. Yeah, so it could be a master's. It could be a, a doctorate. Very good. Okay, so it's a postgraduate. We can assume it might be a doctorate, okay? But we definitely know it's a postgraduate. Good for you. Good for just deep and Simran for paying extra in August and for paying extra attention there. Okay, everyone. Um, now, questions nine to 10, uh, complete the notes below. Uh, you usually get this kind of a question where you have to fill this in so first day of class uh, when is it okay now answer this in a short way okay when is the first day of class now notice here that orientation day is the 3rd of September orientation logically happens before the first day of class so Simran says it's the 5th of September yeah uh, so I would answer this as five sept, okay? Or to not confuse you with that nine, I'll do it as sept five, okay? And it's correct to write it like that, okay? So short form, quick. Um, sep is, September is a tricky one. We usually abbreviate it with a T. It's okay to do it with a P, but it's more common, more accurate to do it with a T, okay? If you really want to spell the full word, you can write September in the answer sheet. Just remember it can take a longer time. So don't write the full word while you listen. Write it when you transfer your answers to the answer sheet. So um, <clears throat> so if you must, do that later, okay? You don't have to though. They will take the short form. Okay. Yeah, uh, Reem, um, you can't write uh, fifth of sep because that's three words. Okay, so pay attention to the question. It's two words. So fifth of sep could be marked as wrong because it's three words. Okay, careful. Uh, orientation hours, nine to midday. Um, who and children should attend orientation? So we have children here. And it is nursery school. 
So it makes sense that the answer here, again, logic students, especially for part one, logic is really useful, parents. Okay, so correct answer there. Parents, uh, yeah, um, don't send your five-year-old to school um, without a parent. That can be a problem. Okay, so parents, um, and notice how children plural, so parents has to be plural as well. If you just write parent, it's wrong. Careful, okay, parents. Anish, you can write the date first or second, doesn't matter, 5th of September, September 5th, it's totally fine, both ways, okay. All right, students, uh, what did you get from 10? So, how did, you, how did you do from 10, okay? What did you get correct? Okay, did you get uh, six or seven or eight or nine or 10? The, your goal, Okay, so your goal should be nine or 10 because it's the easiest section. Okay, me, eight is okay, but you gotta try to go for that at least nine. Puja, nine is, is minimum. Uh, part one, technically the easiest part of IELTS listening, I think it is the easiest, okay? So uh, you have to really try to get a perfect score in part one, you don't want to lose marks in part one because then you're setting yourself up for a challenge. Part two, uh, three, and four are just going to be more uh, difficult. So you, you have to try to get that perfect 10 if you can, okay? Just Deep says, I got 10, I felt that was very easy. Good, okay, that's a good way to feel. That's a good way to be. All right, um, so goal, nine or 10, everyone, okay? All right. Uh, let's hop back to the audio and we'll look at um, uh, part two, okay? All right. So uh, everybody, part two, when we're listening, what do we have to be careful about? So what should we make sure to do based on what I said so far? We're going to listen to part two here in just a moment and what do we what do we make sure to do while we're listening to part two while we listen to part two what do we do what do we do Yeah, <laughs> drum hill, very good. Uh, Dorsey, very good. Concentrate, right? If the camera gets glitchy, who cares, right? If your dog or your neighbor's dog starts barking uh, or there's big traffic outside your window, who cares, right? Uh, listen, listen, focus, all right? Focus, hear the audio only. All right, um, here we go, everyone. So focus. On the questions, focus on the audio. It's your only job. Back here, uh, CD3, track two. Now turn to section two. Take some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Listening section two. You will hear a recording of a university campus tour. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Now listen carefully to the interview and answer questions 11 to 16. Good afternoon, everyone. If you are here for the university campus tour, you are in the correct place. There are two purposes for this tour. For prospective students, you get to see the campus where you may be studying in a few months, and you get to learn some interesting information which may convince you to look favorably on our university. For parents, you get to learn what life is like at this university, so you know where you are sending your kids off to this autumn. Before we start the tour, I'd like to give you some background information. This university was originally opened in 1686, 
although from 1745 to 1805 it was shut down due to a lack of funding. The university is composed of 23 buildings which were built in one of three periods. There were four original buildings in 1686, a dozen more buildings were constructed in the period from 1805 to 1815 and the final seven buildings have been added in the past 10 years. So there is a fascinating mix of 17th century, 19th century and quite modern architecture. The first building we are going to look at is called the Prescott Building, named after the university's first chancellor, William Chester Prescott. As you can probably tell, this is one of the university's original buildings completed in 1686. The building is actually quite unique in shape. It is approximately 40 metres long while only 8 metres wide. It also has these interesting circular areas attached to each corner, four of them in all. These four circular areas each house a large bell. None of the bells work today however. As we walk in the door, I'd like to point out all of the beautiful Persian carpets on the floor. These carpets were donated to the university by a former student almost 150 years ago. It is very common for former students who have done well in life to give back to the university. Some give money, some give land, some give gifts such as Persian carpets. One former student even gave the university his pub after he died. By the way, that pub, which is located at the intersection of 3rd Street and Pine Avenue, gives students of the university a 30% discount. Now if that's not a selling point for this university, I don't know what is. On a serious note, it is our outstanding education which makes our university a top competitor on the global front. You now have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. Now listen to the rest of the interview and answer questions 17 to 20. Before we go any further, are there any questions? No? Right then. Next we are going to visit the University Library. As you see in front of the library, there is a beautiful fountain which shoots water high up in the air. Once again, the funding for the fountain came from a former student, in this case a well-known artist. It was constructed just 15 years ago at the cost of £50,000. As we step into the library, I think what you'll notice at first is the fact there are no books. Indeed, there are no books at all on the entire ground floor. On the five upper floors, however, there are over 3 million books. The library's collection has been built over time through private donations, gifts from former students, as well as university purchases. There is also a special collections area where there are original works dating back to the year 1588. Next on our itinerary is a visit to the sporting facilities. Here at the university we have over a dozen different facilities for almost any sport you can imagine, ranging from football and rugby to tennis and squash to archery and cricket. Our rugby team has won the national championship three out of the last five years. As you'll see on your left is a famous wall where we put pictures of... That is the end of section two. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. And students, check your answers in that half minute. I'm just going to stop the audio on the website here. And we'll go back and answer the questions together. All right, so as you can see, part two, um, definitely a lot more challenging uh, than... Um, than uh, part one. And again, uh, do pay attention that uh, you're getting a bit of help here from me and guidance to show you the pacing, the speed, and kind of the words that you're paying attention to. You need to practice this at home, okay? Um, and uh, you don't have that, obviously, in the real exam. In the real exam, it's up to you uh, to do this, okay? All right, um, so let's go through the answers together. Um, now, uh, 
first, um, the tour guide talks a little bit about the background of the university. So he says that the university uh, opened when? So when did the university open? Uh, Jiang says 1686. Very good, Jiang. Um, how many times did they mention that number? So um, the number is 1686. And um, how many times do they mention that number in the first uh, bit of part two here? Just out of curiosity, I'm, I'm wondering uh, if anybody caught it. So Dorsey says two times, two times. Um, in fact, they mention it three times. Okay, so. Three times, All right? Uh, they talk about it again when they talk about when the first few buildings were built. So they say, he says, uh, yeah, in uh, 1686, they built, um, I, can't, I can't remember, <laughs> seven buildings or something, three buildings. And then they mention it again, um, the Prescott Building, which was built in 1686. So they mention it here with the uh, Prescott Building as well. That was the third time that they mentioned it. So three times, three times. Okay, they mentioned it. So you had three chances to realize that the university was opened in 1686. Okay, but then um, in uh, between 1745 and 1805, during that 60 year period, it was shut down due to a lack of funding. All right, and then um, in 1805, they kind of started operations back up again, and there were a number of buildings. Uh, that were constructed. How many buildings were constructed uh, between or in these 10 years for number 12? It's not 23. 23 is the total number of buildings. So it was not 23. Everybody who gave 23 as the answer got that wrong. Uh, 23 is the total number of buildings at the university. Um, so not right. Okay. Carolina, very good. So Carolina says it was a dozen buildings. So correct answer is 12 for a dozen. Okay. Uh, either a dozen or 12. Both are correct. All right. Dozen buildings. Um, the word dozen is used all the time in English to say 12. Okay, uh, we even use half dozen. Like if you go buy eggs, they'll say a dozen eggs or half dozen eggs. Okay, I'd like a dozen eggs. Yeah, you in um, you can write a dozen because it says two words. So Chung Koi is asking, can I write a dozen? Yes, you can because it's two words. So a dozen is considered two words. So you can. Okay. Now, um, if you missed that, um, then you need to check the transcripts at the back of the book. Okay, so the transcripts at the back of the book, that would be uh, page, um, I don't know, 200 and something, 250, something like that. Here, let's take a look. Uh, 200. Two hundred two, maybe. Okay, um, yeah. So it's 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 in the back. I'm not going to search for it right now, but it's in the back of the book. The transcripts. Check the transcripts. Okay, when you don't know the answer, where the script is. Okay. All right. Um, okay, so it was a dozen buildings. And then in the past something years, seven buildings were con are constructed. So in the past how many years? Number 13. Uh, Mi says that was 10. Um, Sunil says 10 years. Sunil, don't write 10 years because you'll get it wrong. If you write 10 years, uh, that's wrong. Okay, because they already give you years here. 
So if you write years again, notice how Microsoft Word says, hey, that's wrong. You can't have the same word two times. Uh, so you can only have 10. If you wrote 10 years, it's wrong. It has to be just 10. Okay, come back, same thing. Just 10, not 10 years. Okay, the only answer you should put in your answer sheet is 10. Okay, uh, the Prescott building, the first building constructed in 1686, uh, looks like what? Looks like A, B, or C here, number 14. Yeah, it's B. It, um, we learned that it's a very long building. It says something like it's 50 feet long and just 8 feet wide or 10 feet wide or something like that. So it's a long, narrow building. Yes, with bells in the corners. So those are bell towers. Okay, very good. Uh, number 15, how many years ago uh, were the Persian carpets donated? So I heard the words Persian carpets donated. Anish, you can't write dozen of. No, dozen of would be the wrong answer. Okay. So how many years ago? 150 years ago. Very good, everyone. Um, now the question asks how many years ago? You have the word years ago. So you don't actually have to write years because the unit is in the question. So it's 150, okay? Um, keep that in mind, everyone. If the unit of measure is in the question, you do not need to write it. If it is not, in the question, then you must write it. Okay, so if you wouldn't see um, years ago, like if the question were when were the carpets don donated, then you would have to write 150 years ago. Okay. But in this case, it asks how many years ago, so 150 is enough. Does that make sense, everybody? So you don't need to repeat information that's in the question, but you have to be clear. So if it's not in the question, then you have to give that unit. So you have to say years or minutes or whatever, okay? Clear, everyone? Make sense? Simran says, yes, sir. Reem says, yeah, that makes sense. Kamil Beck says lightning bolts and super flex. All right. <clears throat> okay. Number 16. Uh, what discount do the students receive at the local pub? So students want to go enjoy a beer after classes. I'm going to save a little bit of money. Uh, Parshant, 150 years is not wrong in that case because it's a short answer question, but it's a problem in the sense that you're wasting time by writing years, okay? You don't need to do that. So 150 years is okay for that last question, but you don't need the word years. Okay, Reem says it's 30%. A lot of people say A. Uh, Reem, make sure you write the letter in your answer sheet, not the number. Okay, it's A, 30%, very good. Tony, just one time. You don't need to slam A and enter back and forth. Um, we got it, okay? So just one time. Um, A, yeah, 30%, very good, everyone. Ural says C, nope, not 3%. Um, Ural, use logic, 3%, is that really savings? Like, are you really saving money by saving 3%? That's almost kind of a joke, right? So uh, this logically doesn't make sense. A savings of 3% is kind of insulting. Okay, if I said, ooh, uh, we got a discount code on our course, you get to save 3%, you guys would be like, what? Come on, man, uh, give me at least 20%. And that's why for our premium IELTS package, we have a 20% discount, it's iSIM9. You use that, you get 20% off. If I told you I'm giving you a special discount for 3% off of our premium package, you'd kind of be like, Adrian, that's not really helping me. Okay. 
All right, um, so complete the summary. This is a very typical type of question. It's again a question that you definitely will see in your IELTS exam, okay? Sometimes in the computer base, it's a drag and drop style. Um, in the paper base, you fill it in by hand. So no dragging and dropping. Um, here we go. So write no more than two words and or a number for each answer. In front of the library, there's a beautiful something. Um, Reem says it's a water fountain. Dorsey says it's a fountain fountain. And we've got emojis uh, of fountain. You can't use emojis in the actual aisles, but yes, it's a fountain. You don't need capital letters. It's part of the sentence, it's a common noun. It is a fountain, very good Anish. Okay, so in front of the library, there's a beautiful fountain. Inside the library, the ground floor has, how many books, number 18? How many books? Me says there are no books. You're right, me, no books. No books. Yeah, they want to maybe keep keep it away from water damage. So there's no books, no books. No is the correct answer. The upper floors, however, house over three million books. Wow. The collection was built by donations, gifts, and university purchases. Additionally, there's a something area. This was a tricky one. Whoever got number 19, is really paying attention. It's not a collections area. It's two words in this case. It's a special collections area. Make sure you get the spelling correct. Uh, Chong Kui, it's not a special collection. It's a special collections. It's plural in this unique case. You have to have the S as well. If you don't have the S, you'll get it wrong because special collection is a different word than special collections. So special collection means it's special for me. I love it. Special collections means that it's multiple collections that are unique. Okay. So in this case, the S gives it a bit of a different meaning, this collocation. So the only way to get this one correct is to get both words, special and collections. You kind of have to know what the meaning of that is, okay? All right. Uh, with works dating back to 1588, there are many sporting facilities. Um, by the way, if you miss an answer like special collections, don't worry about it. I mean, some, you know, that might be that one really tricky band nine level question, okay? So there are many sporting facilities, including the rugby field, which is home to the rugby team, which has won uh, three of the past five what have they won? Uh, they ha it's not years. It's not years, everyone. Almost just deep, almost. Just a little mistake. Augustine, same thing, little mistake. Championships are countable, everyone. In IELTS, if you don't have an S and the S is needed, you get it wrong. Doesn't have to be capital, you can. National championships, you need the S on that one as well. Okay, um, because it's three, right? It's countable, there's three of them. So it's national championships, right? Careful. Okay, how did you do out of 20? What did you get out of uh, 20 students? So how did you perform? Now, if you're looking for that band, um, like, uh, seven or more, uh, you should have uh, 16 or greater correct from the 20. 
Just Deep says, I got 18 out of 20 in Just Deep. That's pretty good. Okay, that's the right track. You can still get an 8.5 as long as you do really, really well in part three and part four. Uh, Nitu, 19, even better. Reem, 16, not bad. Okay, 16 is a benchmark. Pooja, 17 is good. Uh, me, 15, it's okay. It's okay, it's not terrible. Um, yeah, all right. So, uh, by the way, students, uh, when you do the full listening, okay, uh, you can go to our website and um, on the website at the very, very bottom. Let me, um, so at the very bottom of our website at ahelp.com, you have this, um, you have this score calculator, okay, right there, right beside me, that score calculator. You click on that score calculator and you can enter your score. Now, of course, the full listening is out of 40, so let's see you got 32. It will tell you that your score is 7.5 if you get a total score of 32 out of 40. We haven't done part two and three yet. We're going to do that next week, okay? So, but there it gives you the score, okay? Uh, same thing for the reading. You can check that out there. So you've got a score calculator on the website, okay? It's ahelp.com forward slash score dash calculator forward slash and you're good to go. So there it is, score calculator. Use that score calculator uh, to figure out your scores, okay? And again, um, go to aehelp.com and uh, join our premium IELTS package. It's a great time to do it if you've got an exam coming up in a few days, in a week, in a month. There are quick strategies, there are big strategies that will help you to improve your score, guarantee it, okay? So uh, click that big red button um, and uh, then uh, fill out your information. Uh, use the uh, discount code ISIM9 to get that 20% discount. It's not a 2% discount, it's a 20% discount, okay? All right, uh, students, I'll be back with, um, with uh, listening part three and four next week. Okay, so we will finish this next week. Um, the price, Just Transforming has asked me, what is the price of the course? It depends where you are. If you're a in a country with lower GDP, like India, for example, or Vietnam, it'll be $25 US, so it's a lower price. If you're in a country that's got a little bit more money, um, for example, like Brazil, then it's gonna be 49 US. And if you're in a wealthier country, like uh, Canada or the US, then it's gonna be 59. So it depends on where you are, okay? Uh, we try to adjust it to the budget of people in the country. Um, again, aehelp.com for academic IELTS, uh, gieltshelp.com for general IELTS, okay? And uh, use that discount code ISIM9. Uh, that's it for me for today, but uh, I'm actually going to have a special class, another class coming up in about 40 minutes. Um, that will be on this uh, Discord um, server right here. Uh, and that will be a really cool kind of unique speaking class. So if you want to do a little bit more IELTS today, then check out this URL at Discord and take part in the speaking class that I'm going to host there. It was lovely having all of you with me today. Tons and tons of students. That was awesome. Thank you, Carolina, for uh, moderating. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you for the support members. Uh, tomorrow, speaking part two, speaking part three. Make sure you're here for that on the YouTube channel. Okay, and I'll see you uh, maybe on Discord or hopefully tomorrow. I'm Adrian. I'm signing out. Much love to all of you wherever you are in this big, beautiful world. Bye for now.